I'm going to talk about linear quantum error correction. Uh, a, a longer, may I have point, just pointer? A longer title for my talk was this. Uh, a map-based formulation for fault tolerant quantum computation in presence of no, uh, non-Markovian noise. Actually, I've heard about this uh, story of non-Markovian noise in these two days that uh, still there is no uh, uh, an exact or say a reliable formulation for non-Markovian noise in the presence of uh, for, uh, for the fault tolerant quantum computation problem. So. For a while, we, were talk we thought about this uh, problem, and uh, linear quantum error correction is a formulation or a setup that we came up. So, uh, my talk is that first of all, I go through, I, I try to motivate this work, and then, uh, should I stay here? And then I uh, explain that how we can represent dynamics of an open quantum system, an arbitrary uh, open quantum system, just by linear maps. And it means that we can. Um, uh, represent any noise process. We can model it only by linear maps. And then I talk about the quantum error correction codes for linear maps. In particular, I, uh, as, uh, I uh, explain two types of recovery, complete positivity and complete positive and non-complete positive uh, recovery maps and how to implement them. And finally, I come up uh, with uh, a formulation that how we can uh, formulate the fault tolerant theory uh, quantum computation problem uh, using this uh, linear map setup. Okay, uh, this is just a kind of review that you have heard about these uh, uh, facts here in, in these two days. So we just quickly review. Uh, we know that a standard quantum error uh, correction code uh, are uh, explicitly uses the setting of CP maps. It means that both the noise part and the recovery part are considered to be uh, completely positive maps. And this is a single block uh, that, that uh, tells us how the error correction uh, is happening. And uh, all the versions of the fault tolerant uh, quantum computation theory are founded based of this a standard picture of quantum uh, uh, coding. There are two main features of this theory. First of all, uh, because we are using this, uh, say, basic cell to construct the, the big circuit, it's the, it, uh, the modeling is uh, kind of discrete uh, in time. It means that all the parts of the computation, noise, and error are considered to be uh, completely, I mean, CP maps, so it's, they are, must be discrete in time. And as far as I know, we don't have any fault tolerant continuous quantum error correction. Uh, continuous error correction. And the other, the main assumption that uh, we also make in this theory is that system of, system and bath are in, are in a particle cell. At least we need that. To, we need to make this assumption at uh, for for the initial time. So the question remains that so we know that this, both these conditions will satisfy when we are in Markovian regime of decoherence. But if we want to go beyond that. What can we do? Uh, let me uh, say classify or divide uh, the formulation of uh, fault tolerant quantum computation in two different classes, map-based and Hamiltonian-based. Well, the map-based are, are, let's say, the early works of uh, on this problem, or I'll say also the major works uh, has been in, in map-based, it means that uh, we are just looking at the dynamics of the quantum computer, not the bath part. And uh, mostly we, we take a Markovian noise model that this enables us to have a probabilistic error model. But for the non-Markovian noise, we don't know what to do. There is no formulation yet. To answer to the this problem of non-Markovian regime in the most in the last two years, uh, a series of publications uh, were introducing the notion of Hamiltonian best formulation. And the heart of this uh, works was that we go, we, 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 we take the short time approximation of the unitary evolution of the system basis uh, dynamics. But there are some problems, and one of the problems I think with, with this formulation is that the errors are overcounted. We kill some kind of coherence that already exists in, 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 the, in the dynamics. 
So, but, but anyway, so we, we, we know some, we have some solution in the Hamiltonian best formulation. What I'm going to talk about is that some formulation for the non markovian noise in the map-based version of the Faltran quantum computation. Uh, well, uh, first of all, okay, as I told, I want to show how we can represent dynamics of open system only by linear maps. So this is a standard picture. We have a system is interacting with a second huge system, we call it bath, and uh, we're interested to know a state of the system at time t. So it comes from the partial tracing the a state of the system and bath at time t, and uh, we usually make the assumption that uh, sometimes uh, that, that a state of system and bath are in a particular state initially. Sometimes it's a, uh, it's a valid assumption, some, sometimes it's not. But this helps us to come up with this uh, simple form for the state, the state of the system at time t, how it is related to system, uh, the state of the system at initial, initial uh, time. By this EI operator that are just function of the evolution uh, operator and the state, uh, initial state of the system. So this is a, uh, a standard picture and this is a CP map. So I want to do something general. Well, let's start from this initial uh, class of states. This phi ij are the bath operators. They have this property that they are uh, non, they have, they are non, they have non-zero trace. I've just here I've normalized it, or they, they just don't disappear. They just don't appear in this summation. And the system of a state comes out just by uh, tracing out the bath part. And what I'm looking at is the a state of system at time t. So I want to compute the, this guy here. The trick that I take is that I consider the singular value decomposition of this bath operator phi i j. And if I do that, I can come up with this nice formula. As you can see, the row, the initial state of system appears in this between, and pi are, uh, pi are just uh, projectors, and u and v are uh, operators, and just, they're just function of the uh, unitary evolution of the system and bath, and the bath operators. And as you can see, this, this relation has a linear form. It means that I start from, from this initial system bath state, I came up with this uh, linear map. Linear map that maps initial state of system to the, to the uh, state of system at time t. So now look, let's uh, look at the, uh, the general situation. I can write the arbitrary initial system bath as say in this form, in these two terms. You see the first term is what I had, I had in the previous slide, and this new term. What is, uh, what's the property of new term is that the trace of the psi ij here is zero. So uh, this second term has, uh, because of this pr uh, zero trace, we can say that it has zero measure in the Banach space of the uh, operators. So from that, I can say that I can always uh, approximate this initial state of system and bath just by the first, uh, first term, and then I can get linear map. But I can still keep the second term, it, does, it doesn't harm. So why? Because if I look at the state of system, uh, ju just the system at time zero, I don't see that second term does not contribute to that. So I can keep it as something fixed. And if I write, write the total evolution time, I get a linear term from some fixed uh, some, some constant number here. So the whole thing would be an affine map. And taking a uh, theorem from uh, Thomas Jordan, uh, we know that any affine map can be equivalently represented by a linear map. So what's the final conclusion? That we, we started from arbitrary initial uh, system bass state for some general evolution, and we came up with a linear form uh, for, the, for the dynamics. So if, if you know, just if E prime I is equal to E I, we get back to our CP map. So I'm going to use this, this formulation in the rest of my talk, and whenever I talk about the quantum map. How much time do I have? 11, okay. So I want to give you two examples of the, where the non, um, non cp linear map appears. This is a simple example, just, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm looking at the periodic evolution of the system bath. 
I start from a product state and at that time t, I get back my product state. The total mapping from the time zero to capital time t is identity. From time zero to some middle point tau, the map is CP. What I'm interested in is to uh, ask this question that what is the mapping from some middle point to the final point? This mapping, of course, is a linear, and it's not CP, it's non-CP, unless the first part is unitary. So if I have a non-unitary uh, CP map at the, uh, in the first interval, then I get a, a non-CP linear map in the, in the second uh, interval. So um, a second example that might be more, more interesting. Let's look at the inverse, uh, let's look at, look at the phase flip map, is a, or just uh, phase uh, error channel. We know how to correct uh, such an error, right? We know, we know the three qubit code. This is in a standard picture. But this channel, as long as the P is not half, it is invertible. It is mathematically invertible, not physically. So I can write the inverse like this. And you can see this is a linear and it's non cp because at least one of these two, two terms is negative. So from, from this simple example, the idea comes that uh, why we don't think of, uh, I, I mean, uh, we can think of the implementing uh, non-CP recovery that I'm going to explain in the, in the next slide that I talk about the quantum error correction. So quantum error correction for linear maps. So I define code space as usual. We have some data qubit, we add Ansula, we apply unitary for encoding. And the code would be just a subspace of this uh, larger Hilbert space. I need to discuss two types of recovery, CP and non-CP. So let me start from the CP. This is CP recovery. What we could prove is that for a, for a general linear noise map that has this form, I can associate to it an extended CP map that you can see is easily constructed from these uh, operators of this linear map. Right, and what we could show that if we have a coding system, we have a code and we have a corresponding CP recovery that, correct, that, that can correct this uh, extended CP map, it can also correct the original linear map. So this is kind of good news because why? Because we have a sort of from a general uh, noise map and we could show that under some condition we can design or we, we can use a standard quantum code for correcting this non-CP noise map. This is a good point. That I'm going to use this, this result when I'm uh, giving a formulation for fault-tolerant problem. The other issue that I uh, talk about is the idea of non-CP maps. Okay, I'm looking for a non-CP linear map. So I take this formulation, this, I mean, general form for the recovery is going to correct this uh, linear uh, noise map. What we could prove was just some sufficiency condition there, under what condition of this uh, noise map we can find Rj and uh, R prime J uh, operators, such that R corrects phi L. So if these two set of conditions are satisfied, then we can explicitly construct Rj and R prime J based of EI and EI prime. So you can see these two are very uh, they looks very familiar to the, I mean, the real looks like the K Laplace condition for the standard quantum error correction. But here we still don't know uh, what's, uh, I mean, the necessary, con what are the necessary conditions. So it's kind of open problem. You know? And uh, let me talk about implementation of the, the linear maps. We know how to, how to implement CP maps, right? Uh, after the noise, we can just add uh, some recovery ancilla and doing, uh, doing some, uh, applying some unitary recovery between the recovery and so the encoding uh, qubits, we can construct a CP map on the code part. But uh, what about non-CP map? The idea to implement a non-CP map is that initially correlate, uh, uh, make correlation between the uh, code qubits and ancillary qubits. Initial that means make correlation before the noise and then sending through the noise and then doing, doing the recovery at the end. And the mapping that we get for the recovery would be a non-CP map. I mean, from this point to this point. 
Okay. In particular, if you look at this formulation, if, if the noise is only acting on the on the uh, dead, um, and in the encoded qubit part, this is just a setup for the entanglement assisted quantum error correction. But when we are when we are talking about the computation, um, it doesn't make sense to make the assumption that some qubits are uh, are not noisy and the other are noisy. So we need to assume that both they are they are both noisy. So this is the general setup that uh, starting from the cor correlated uh, and co qubit and answer recovery. Okay. Recovery ancillas. Okay, let me give you an example of a non CP recovery. This is just a uh, toy a toy model. Like, uh, I'm not, I'm not looking at the encoding. I'm just looking at the single qubit data and a single recovery ancilla. I take a C naught to correlate them. I send them through this specific uh, noise channel uh, that. Uh, as you can see, it's constructed from these two operators with any uh, superposition of these. And uh, the answer is also uh, noisy. And I, this is the uh, recovery uh, unitary. And if you write this down, you can see that uh, the, the total result is that the data, data qubit doesn't experience any noise. So, and I, I can just simply write the the recovery mapping here has this form, this uh, linear and it's not CP. This is a very simple, uh, it shows uh, the idea of the, of the non CP recovery. And uh, I just, I have time, I just quickly uh, review this, this example of the entanglement as quantum error correction 4131 code that we examine that and uh, we just look at the, the recovery map here. That if it is CP, this condition must be satisfied. But we uh, check this condition is the uh, uh, sigma y error on the third qubit and uh, this on the first qubit, and it is not zero. So the conclusion is that the recovery here is a non CP linear recovery. This, this was a second example. And uh, let me talk about the fault tolerant part. Actually, I haven't, uh, I don't have a result on that, so I, I've just have this formulation for the fault tolerant, uh, uh, fault tolerant quantum computation, how we can formulate that based of these uh, linear maps. So what are the advantages that we take? That we don't need any more to make the assumption that the royal state of the system is in the product of state. And uh, for a general formulation, we can consider this uh, General super, this big super operator that is uh, taking our quantum computer at time t zero to capital time t, and I can decompose this. Uh, this big super operator in this uh, in, uh, in this uh, setting, that U I are are unitaries. They are computation or a recovery or what? Uh, and uh, this is a noise part. That uh, the difference between the the standard. Uh, or the, the Markovian noise modeling of the fault problem is that these should be CP in that formulation, but here we can just simply replace them by uh, linear maps. And uh, what's more is that we don't need uh, first order approximation. We can do anything exact here. And uh, so let's end off with my conclusion. I just reviewed them. What we get is that we could uh, show that a reduced dynamics open cost system can be represented just by linear maps. And the other thing was that every linear noise map can be fixed just by the codes, the, the standard codes that we know, just by CP recovery. And uh, this was the idea of the non-CP recovery, uh, that just by uh, creating initial correlation between encoding and recovery and select qubits, we can we can implement a non CP recovery. But there is a uh, open. I mean, there are many problems here. You, you can work at on, on that. And uh, the, the the last thing, as I showed in the last slide, how we can formulate the factor problem using this idea of the linear maps. So, one minute left. Thank you. I'm done.
No, there are two different things. I mean, from the non-secure recipe recovery, we, we expect some advantage, like uh, we maybe, as the example that I gave for the uh, inverse of the face flip, face flip map, right? If we can implement that, it means that for the face flip map, we don't need any uh, encoding. But the, the, what I told about the CP recovery was that, I mean, it was a good thing. We can, have, uh, we can use the, the codes that we have to correct the general noise map. Sitting is the same. We really don't know, need to have this EPR pairs. And what's interesting with this uh, formulation of EPR pairs is that we can explicitly construct this uh, nice uh, quantum, I mean, nice uh, quantum codes that uh, talk, talk about that. But we can also think about some general setting. Maybe we can think of some optimization uh, problem to find the, what's the best uh, correlating. Uh, unitary and the best re recovery and get some new codes. So there is no contradiction and uh, they I, are the same. I'm just asking for a formulation of the general criteria for quantum error correction. Okay, we'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs>